Greetings, Sir and Sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix. And of course, a welcome back to the Sandbox Mode. In today's episode, as the title may suggest, we're going to be doing a little bit of science to do with submarines and hydrofoils. Hydrofoils, of course, being the lovely water element that it will allow you to control your depth in a more manual way than things like the air pump for instance and the reason why we're going to be doing this today is because I really do in the future want to create a functional submarine which we can actually use in our campaign the manned submarine that I made as much as I do love it simply isn't really getting any use mostly because it it sinks too easily and its control is a little bit off no matter what I do so clearly that was a bit of inexperience on my part and not really being able to create the submarine of my dreams. But today I seek to remedy this. So hydrofoils, as you can imagine, can be used very effectively to control the depth of a vehicle. In fact, you can even use it on ships to make sure they don't sink by having them set to 45 degrees. In fact, that's how my lovely bunker stays afloat. So with that in mind, we are now just creating this little... Um, I don't really know exactly what this thing is I've created. It's got an engine. It's going to have hydrofoils being controlled with control blocks, that's all we need to know. So this will probably be quite a short episode, but I really want to do this on camera, as it's something which I need to learn, and I want people to understand how this works, as quite a few people have been asking me how to make a submarine, and as someone who doesn't really know, this is something I need to figure out. So, what we need now, so we've added our hydrofoils, rather, we've got our engine, we have no AI currently, and we have this very weird, obviously not exactly very aerodynamic vehicle, which, sh which should, should sink. If it doesn't sink, this isn't going to work. That sinks a lot slower than I expected, but okay, it will still work even if it only sinks a little bit. In fact, it probably would work even if it, did, if it didn't sink, but that's not what I'm after today. So we're going to add a mainframe, and to the mainframe we're going to add a card slot, there we go, Which and all we're going to put in there is the naval AI, just to make sure the engines will activate by themselves and won't need me to actually do anything. So, large propellers, we don't need much, we just need enough this thing can actually move forwards, and there we go, this thing now should be able to, well, move forwards. Quite quickly, actually. Surprisingly quickly. Not fast, but fast enough. And we do need to disable it from being able to reverse, actually, otherwise that's going to really mess things up. Do we want this thing to be able to turn? We kind of do, but we don't care too much. We're actually going to add some lead before we continue, just to act as a bit of a proto-keel. Just to make sure that the ship will always try to sink kind of flat, that's all. There we go. That should help. Yeah, there we go. That should help it flatten out. So right now, of course, this thing will just plummet towards the ocean bed, which is absolutely fine. So control and automated control blocks. If we get this thing working extremely quick, I will try to make a very small functional submarine. So there's a good chance this will end up as a building and science video. Hurrah for that. Let's just put these here. Okay, so we have two control blocks. So these can control hydrofoils. If the ship is above let's say, where is it, um, altitude, there you go, when activate, when the altitude is greater than, let's say, 36, if so, if it's higher than 36, we want the hydrofoils to be at minus 45, test, excellent, that's exactly what I wanted to see, that's everything I wanted to see, yes, yeah, so whenever it's higher than a certain angle, that will happen, which should cause the ship to plummet towards the ocean depths. Okay, there we are. However, if the altitude is less than 36 point... Oh, I'd be... Oh, uh, wait, no, 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 this will be wrong, this is all wrong, I did this wrong. Okay, yeah, if it's greater than minus 36, it should have been the answer. So, okay, so minus 37, that will do that. However, if it's greater than minus 37.2 then I would like the hydrofoils to revert that and go to plus 45. So, if the ship is higher than minus 
34, of course, zero being at water level, then, then the hydrofoil should cause the front to dip down very rapidly. However, if it gets lower than this degree, then it will, of course, go up into the sea. Well, it will go back up to 45 degrees, which should cause the ship to go back up towards the surface. Let's see if this actually works. So, there we go, dipping straight down. However, the hmm, small issue, this is, this is a very small issue actually, we do have the boat propellers so far back that that angle is so harsh, the boat propellers didn't actually go underwater. Try again. Why is the engine not moving these now? Is it because we ran out of fuel? Hmm, okay, well this is not an issue I expected. So, in the last clip, it turns out I was making a load of mistakes, mostly rookie mistakes, honestly, that was causing the ship to simply act in the way it was. But as you can see now, even on the map view, the submarine now perfectly responds to orders in fleet move, and in fact even works in combat mode, as I gave it a quick little test. Let's go over to the vehicle and let's address some of the problems, because this is a science episode, an episode about learning the game and making our progress a little bit more efficient in the future, and I'm doing a bit of a dance. Ignoring my dancing avatar, the first mistake I was making, and arguably one of the biggest, was that I wasn't paying attention to the center of mass. The center of mass was actually so high, it was causing our ship to essentially keel over. It was slowly flipping itself and making itself rise when it should have been lowering, lowering when it should have been rising purely because it had absolutely no sense of which way was up, which way was down, because this thing doesn't actually have that yet. There are no control blocks dictating which way is up, which way is down, and where things are, such as the floor, which I will need to do in a finished version. These are called detector blocks, and although they are just control blocks, these are control blocks which you use, I'll just put one down, to essentially figure out where the floor is and then try to avoid it. So let's say... Where are you? If there is an object in front within so many meters, and of course we face it down, then activate something. And generally, these things are spin blocks, or those sort of things, which are found inside the ship, which cause the ship to rise up, and thus avoid the floor, or perhaps even avoid things in front of them, like mountains. They're really simple to set up, and they just make the ship a little bit harder to sink. By itself, of course. If it's going to be hit, it's still going to be hit. The second thing, which was also a massive mistake, was the positioning of the control blocks. I should have knew better here, but this was just because I, well, completely forgot. The control blocks don't get their velocity information, sorry, their altitude information from the overall info. They actually get it from wherever they are positioned on the ship, from where the block actually is. So having the two blocks all the way back here, and then having the lift all the way up here, means it never truly figured out how high or how low the ship was meaning that it would have stayed on 45 degrees forever and simply went in circles because the control block would never have actually reached the altitude it wanted. So now we have them at the front where the nose actually is and as you can see it's very, very stable. Actually more stable than any submarine I've ever made. For a 10 minute build that's really not too bad. So those were the two major mistakes. I made a few other little mistakes like um, the positioning of the what do you call them, the propellers and such, but other than that, it was all pretty well and good. We also now have jet stabilizers, although it doesn't seem like they're necessary, as adding them didn't really do much, but it is still nice to have them there. So now, I'd like to discuss the big benefits to using the hydrofoils over the regular, where are you, the regular air pumps for for controlling the propulsion, for controlling the height and lowering of the ship. The main benefit is that these are a lot less susceptible to damage, because these can be kept inside of the vehicle, just like the air pumps, as long as they're not with air pumps, and, well, if that room is breached, they don't suddenly stop working. Unlike an air pump, which can cause you to just, just to flip over if you've got enough damage on one side, you would have to essentially destroy all of these before the vessel completely loses its ability to go up and down in the water. Of course, as they are lost and it becomes lopsided, the thing will naturally begin to flip slightly, but because of how the 
altitude is actually calculated, it will still end up flipping around about at the right altitude, it will just flip to its side, whereas an air pump will eventually crash into the bottom of the ocean. So all that is well and good. So I think then, with all that knowledge now being imparted, and the fact we've actually been following a set line for that long without any huge issues, I think I'm going to try to build a very small little submarine, just to make sure I understand how it works. We're going to build one from scratch, add a basic weapon system, and see how we do. The submarine starts here. So, I've essentially built a giant engine room, which will be at the very heart of the sub. This will be able to power a lot of propulsion and a lot of shield power, in addition to possibly some anti-missile stuff. So it can act as a bit of a support vessel, which is always good if you ask me, since I seem to have a penchant for creating them. So what we need to do now is actually create a weapon system and the propulsion system itself. And how I think I'm going to do that is I'm going to remove these little bits here. There we go. And we're going to have two identical rooms on either side. And then the back of them will be the propulsion system itself and the front will house the weapon system or the middle or something like that. You get the general idea. So where are the beams for? Okay, there we are. And we're going to carry on down like this until we're just a little bit lower than the uh, than the engine room here. Then we're going to make probably I'm not sure how big they're going to be. They're probably going to be a lot more flat than this, so probably um, half of a cylinder attached upside down over here. After 10 minutes of sculpting and changing my mind at least once per minute, I finally came up with a design I'm quite happy with. Along the sides, we have these lovely little, honestly kind of cat-shaped silos, which will house surface-to-air missiles, in addition to having small compartments at the bottom to house ammo and ammunition processors, which will of course keep it away from the main section which houses the engine and currently the AI. I have already installed the hydrofoils and they are working absolutely fine. This ship can already maintain its altitude at a nice constant rate, currently set to minus 20. The front, however, I'm not happy with at all and will be removed. This is just a little section which I kind of made quickly just so, so my character has somewhere to sit rather than constantly resetting my camera and making me do all sorts of silly things to make sure I'm actually locked onto my ship. So that's that so far. I'm actually pretty happy with this. I'm not sure if I'm going to be adding it to the campaign. I very well might do it. It wouldn't be too difficult to add to the campaign. Of course, we could always edit it later, but for now this is a very good test and a very good bit of practice for me learning how to make a functional submarine rather than something just for vanity like the crab submarine we currently have in the campaign, loaded in somewhere near the snap jaw. So I'll be right back once I've done some more sculpting on the back here and hopefully have chosen a design for the front. I think it needs to actually attach to this section a little bit more, because at the moment it looks a bit kind of forced on the front. As ever a fan of the industrial look, I am actually really happy with this thing right now. It looks industrial, grimy, and all round horrible in all the right ways. This front section looks like it's been welded onto the rest of the ship, and the rest of the ship seems to be made of refuge metal, all forged together in the heat of battle to create something truly horrendous, and I adore it. I think I will be adding this to the campaign. But nonetheless, now it's about time we start adding the actual weapon systems. So, it's got the AI sorted, it has the control blocks, it can turn absolutely fine, and it moves remarkably slowly. So that's something else I'll, I'll, I will need to consider in the future, but for now, I am more than happy having its current speed be its current speed. The propellers aren't actually uh, in the correct places either, they are not with the center of mass. However, because of the hydrofoils, this is becoming a non-issue. It's only a little bit shaky because of how, how sharp the hydrofoils turn, and I've got them on a very, very particular setting, so it can only go 0.1 of a meter before it actually corrects itself and begins going the other way. This means it is really, really stable at around about 20 meters. That is from the very bottom of the ship where the control blocks actually are. Either way, I am really happy with it, so Let's start adding the weapon systems. 
I'm going to add one just because the weapon systems themselves is are well something I've not done before. Of course, I've done missiles a million times. However, this style of missile is something very new to me. So, missile control left. Let's face it this way instead. There we go. Then let's go missiles and torpedoes. You want the six-way connectors here and here. There we go. Is that the right place? I don't think it is the right place. Nope, it's one off. That's absolutely fine. A little bit difficult to see when it's when it's this compact. Perhaps I should have made this a little bit earlier. Okay. Remove these now for the launch pads. Which is going to go here and here. There we are. All connected. Lovely to see. Weapon blocks. And we're going to need these to be quite big. They don't need to be massive. It's not like they have to be ridiculously sized. But they have to be at least... Uh, I don't know how big. Uh, about five blocks, I would say, is the minimum. Six is probably more realistic for what we want them to do. But then, of course, that will be more expensive, which is never a good thing. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I think five is probably what we're going to be aiming at here. So, what we want, uh, we could use the short-range thrusters for uh, just for simplicity. It really is a bit silly. We should use the variable, but I think since I'm not 100% sure if this thing actually is going to be used, I'm going to keep it like that. Plus, the thrusters have a very easy delay thing, so start delay, we'll, we'll test it at 10. There we go. Just for now, we'll test that at 10. We're going to want how many fins? Uh, I'm thinking three. It does need to be a little bit extreme, but not too extreme. Three fuel tanks, no, 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 two fuel tanks have the one turn element, so maybe only two fins then, if we're going to go with a five size, that might be better, that might, yeah, okay, and, and then there's two fragments and the infrared. A pretty simple missile, but again, this isn't a particularly huge ship, so it doesn't really have the capacity to use massive missiles, just have it around there, have it around there. Good enough. Assigned to all. Okay, so the big thing is, with the delay, is that this means it'll take 10 seconds before the thruster actually activates. I think that's a little bit too much. Let's take that down to 5 instead. And we're going to add... Where are you, my beautiful ejectors? Now, the ejectors need to go onto the actual launch pad, I believe. Is that true? Okay, but can they go on here by any chance? And I've got the wrong way around. There we go. Does that by any chance attach it to the Lord? No, it doesn't. Okay. So if we wanted two or more, we'd have to change this up a bit. I mean, we could just have one missile per silo. Okay, yeah, let's do that instead. One missile per silo. That will also allow us to perhaps have six side, um, six size missiles later on. We could also break down this bit of metal here to add a little bit more to a launch pad. But I think for now, we're going to leave it at that. And we'll just quickly attach an AI to it, then we'll give it a quick test shot to see how it actually acts. If all goes really, really well, and I don't think it will, but if all goes really well, this should fire into the air, go through the water, have a few seconds where gravity takes its toll and it slows down before then heading off in the direction of the enemy. That's if it actually works. Here we are testing out the missiles in short range, and ultimately, they work absolutely fine. I've just did a quick test at long range as well, and they are absolutely perfect. It seems like just under 5 seconds is the amount of time on the delay that seems to work for this current altitude. Of course, as I get lower in the water, I will need more ejectors and probably a longer delay to accompany that. At long range, it works just as well. In fact, I'll, I will allow this thing to reload as I currently haven't got any ammunition processors and we'll test it out at long range as well. Since we've already tested the missiles on short range marauders and long range marauders, I figure it's only fair that we test out on the a marauder of the sky, the Atlas. So we'll quickly spawn one of those in, there it is, and there we go. I, I'll be honest, I'll be watching these missiles for hours to come after this video. That's just absolutely wonderful. Really do need to add IR cameras to them, however, because the current ability to um, fire all together is fantastic, but I do notice a lot of the damage is being wasted as they're all hitting the exact same area. Some of them are simply going through the target, some of the fragments are getting lost in the explosion. It would be better if the missiles were more like that every shot and hit a variety of areas. 
But yeah, really happy with this so far, but I'm afraid I am all out of time for today's episode. If you have enjoyed today's episode and are enjoying From the Depths as a series, then of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Thank you so much for watching, and goodbye.